Hey there, friend, and welcome back. My name is Sarah Raskin. I'm not alone today. I have a friend. I would like to welcome Gina Marie onto the show. Gina, you emailed me, and I'm so excited we get to have this conversation. Hello. Hi. Thank you so much. I'm so excited. I'm really glad to keep the conversation going. As Absolutely. You say. Yeah. I, uh, it's so funny because I put out the email and you're the only per- uh, to have people email me and you're the only person that emailed me back, which I appreciate so much. And we've been trying to have this, we've been trying to make this work for quite some time. So I'm, I'm very thankful and very happy that we're, you know, able to sit down and, and talk. Me too. And I'm, I'm hoping that there are other of your audience members out there who want to jump in and join the conversation. So I mean, I can't believe I was the only one so far, but I know I'm not the last. Yeah, no, well, I'm definitely, I'm very honored to to have you here. So thank you very much, Gina. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Yeah. All right. So we're going to get started with the first question, even though I have just said your name about like 50 times, please tell us your name because that's like customary. And you would like to tell us where you're from and, or your time zone. All right. Well, I'm Gina Marie and um, I'm from upstate New York, Eastern time zone. And wait, was there another question? I'm a little nervous. So no, you're all good. It's all good. Nope. That, that pretty much covers it. I actually, my dad used to um, belong to a hunting club in Roscoe, New York, and we used to go up there all the time to go four wheeling and stuff. It was, it was a good time. I upstate New York's really beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. So I actually have a curveball question that I didn't, uh, I forgot to mention before. Um, how long have you known about Dr. Joe's work? Oh, okay. This is a cool, I love this question. <laughs> um, I've heard his name for years because like many of the people in this community, I've gone through various phases of like self-development and things like that. So right. I've been aware of his, his name and I've always been saying like, I got to check out that guy. I got to check out that guy. And actually once a few years ago, I did. And I, whatever I saw was not an accurate representation of his work. And it actually no like freaked me out and scared me off. So it was like, someone had some like weird video and it was like the middle of his meditation and he's talking about space. And all I could think of was like outer space. And I'm like, what is this aliens? And like, I only gave it like five seconds. As soon as I heard space, I turned it off. Oh. And I was like, I didn't give him a fair chance because he wasn't talking about yeah. outer space. He's talking about space, you know? Yeah. And so then like um, a year ago, well, almost a year ago, last June, um, I decided to look into him again and because I was going through some health issues, like a lot of us do. And I was like, oh, this is exactly what I needed. Mm-hmm. And then I dived right in and I just, I got the books. I watch all the interviews. I watch all the testimonials on YouTube. And then I got the progressive and intensive course online. Yeah. And I was just like in it right away in it. And then it's, I was like, I got to get to an event as soon as possible. And, and you know, it happened from there. Yeah, that's awesome. It's so funny. I, I feel you with the whole space and space thing because I was researching Dr. Joe probably like two or three years ago. And I heard this guy who sounded like he was recording one of the meditations from one of the books in his room. And it had like a super reverb to it. And he was talking about the space and space. And this was before you could Google Dr. Joe's meditations, like nothing could be found. So I totally understand that whole, like being turned off by the space and space thing. Cause if you don't understand it, like it's kind of a hard concept, you know, like yeah. I'm just getting it like kind of now. <laughs> Yeah. And I blame, I only blame myself for that because it was a video. I think someone was doing a bootleg video from inside the retreat because it showed, it showed people in the room meditating. And you know, when you're deep in meditation, everyone's like a statue and they're not moving. And there was, there was a kaleidoscope going on and I was like, okay, so these are like people trying to contact space aliens and they're being hypnotized (laughs) I didn't know what I was looking at I was like nope next (laughs) yeah well well it's so not what he does (laughs) no which which retreat did you do okay so my first one was your first one I believe Marco Island okay okay in January of this year yes and we didn't run into each other but it's so funny that we were both there and then I went to the advanced follow-up retreat in Denver in April. That's right. Those are mine too. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's so funny that we didn't, we didn't bump into each other, but I mean, I'm sure in spirit, we, we collided someplace in the cosmos. (laughs) Well, 
I'm not sure if you had heard. So my, my mom and my sister were, um, were with me on the trip. They were kind of like mooching off of my hotel room because I was paying for the trip. And uh, they were hanging out in the, the hotel pool one of the days. And there was a guy who actually found one of the badges and a wristband and managed to sneak himself in. No, he found, he found one of the, the wristbands. He didn't find a badge. And he snuck himself into the event. And then he was just like totally freaked out by like the stuff, like the meditations and everything. And he was hanging out by the pool and he was on the phone with someone that was just like, oh yeah, it's like a weird cult thing going on. They're totally <laughs> passing out drugs. And my mom was just like, oh my God, and I'm like what? so yeah that was that was a pretty a pretty funny experience and it's people are just really funny how they respond to the work when you aren't like sure of like the theory and stuff behind it but Mm -hmm. they then cracked down about having your badges and your wristbands after that so I'm thankful that they did that (laughs) it's so funny you mentioned that do you remember during that Marco Island retreat he told the story about I think it was there somewhere he told the story where one at one of the first events the hotel staff followed him to his room to search his room yes. because they were convinced he was giving everyone drugs because yeah. everyone was like happy and like yep. hugging and loving and peace, love and happiness. And they were like, these, these people are on drugs. <laughs> yeah. But no, it's just meditation. It's amazing. I actually <laughs> became friends with one of the, um, one of the hotel managers at the Hyatt in San Diego. Um, my mom again passed along the information um, of my YouTube channel. So if he's watching, hello, it was really, it was such a pleasure to, to meet you. Um, but the same thing with like the staff there too. Everyone was just like, we don't want you to leave. We want you to stay because everyone's so nice. <laughs> it is. It's it. like another world. Those retreats are like magic. They are. I'm hoping to be able to make it to the, the Marco Island follow-up because it was just, it was so amazing and so beautiful there. I, I miss it there so much. <laughs> All right. So question number two, I got a scenario for you. I want you to pretend that you're in line to get coffee and or drink of your choice. And you strike up a conversation with the person behind you with three people in front of you before you have to place your order. How would you describe yourself to that person? Okay. So this is an interesting question because I, I have so many different like versions of myself. Ooh. But, but, oh wait, that sounded like a, I don't mean like in a schizophrenic way. No, just, no, 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 no. <laughs> not that there's, not that there's anything wrong with, you know, mental illness challenges. No. Oh gosh, I'm digging the hole. <laughs> You're good. All right, here's my answer. My answer is that um, I think that I have, I'm, a, I'm this person who has this relentless, un killable sense of optimism Mm. because no matter what bad things happen in my life I always get back around to the point where I'm hopeful again and I have I always imagine my future with like the greatest grandest these grandiose visions of my future and my imagination just I could it takes me away and it just it's a part of me that never goes away like even in the darkest moments when I'm not feeling that way, somewhere in the back of my mind, I always know that that will reemerge. And so I feel like I got it. So yeah. is, that, awesome. is that what you wanted? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a really great explanation. You can almost say that. Other you're... than that, I'm like quirky and weird and fun. And Hey, that, those are good attributes as well. You can almost say that you're painfully optimistic. I've been called painfully optimistic before because I'm I'm kind of in the same boat as you where <laughs> actually yesterday I was driving up to uh, go see Abigail and someone I was trying not to get hit going through the light was turning yellow and I wasn't sure if the person in front of me was going to like stop like the person coming at me if they were going to stop and the truck behind me decided to try cutting around and going up the street but then I turned at the same time and I kind of like looked at him and I laughed and I was like what are you doing and then I just kept going on my merry way like I didn't get mad or anything and I didn't let it like that that feeling that you get when you get like cut off especially in car situations but like I totally feel that just being just optimistic like everything's gonna be okay <laughs> good for you that's the way to be yeah. you're a natural fit for this work for the joke yeah. <laughs> thank you all it seems like you are as well that's we we need more people like the two of us in this world for sure yeah you know you find something and it resonates with you like this work won't resonate with everybody it's not for everybody but when it's right I think people feel it 
I agree. And also leading by example. And I know Dr. Joe talks a lot about this too. And like you go back and you get integrated back in your everyday life and people are like, something's different with you. And I've had that happen with people who don't see me on, on the daily people who actually like rarely interact with me are being nice to me. And mm-hmm. like, they know that my vibration is just different and people want a piece of that when they find out, like there's something different and there's something more you know, they're, they're curious and we we're here to kind of strike up that curiosity, you know? Hell yeah. I'm, for yeah. It. I'm here for it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here for it. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> so how was your retreat and or retreats? Sarah. Oh my God. Life-changing really. Like I had high hopes going into the first one. I'll say the first one and the second one were very different experiences, mm. but they were both life-changing in different ways. And that very first retreat, I was prepared for it. And I was so excited, but I knew that I wouldn't, basically, I didn't know exactly what to expect other than be open to anything because I had watched a lot of people's YouTube videos where they give reviews and those are very helpful, but they're also different. Right. So I showed up there and I don't want to give any spoilers for any of the people watching who are considering going, you should go, definitely go. (laughs) Um, I'll just say this. I was so impressed with the way they, their team coordinated 14, 13, 1400 people and how all the communication was done and the technology they used to keep everyone on the same page. Mm. It was amazing, but the retreat itself, incredible. I had, I went deeper in the meditation than I had done at home. I had some mystical experiences, which I was hoping for, but didn't really in the back of my mind, truly believe could happen to me. I had, um, I experienced real time improvements in my health. And then when I got home, I observed all these changes in myself that had happened and witnessing them, witnessing them happen was like magic. And then of course, connecting with the community, making friends really change. I mean, all of it together totally changed my life for the better. And it was one of the best things ever. And then the second retreat was an advanced follow-up. Um, <clears throat> that was a little different because it's, it's four days instead of seven days, <clears throat> excuse me. And he does some additional breath work right before bedtime. Have you heard of this? It's so cool. So like oh. people refer to it. I've, I've seen other people in their other videos talking about their AFUs, their advanced follow-ups. And they talk about like going to bed with Dr. Joe, like <laughs> getting tucked in by Dr. Joe. What are they talking about? So it turns out what he does is this coolest thing. Like he gets on the hotel CCTV, like you put your television on a certain channel and he's, you can hear his audio and he, he like t- talks to you a little bit and then he guides you in this like breath work. And then everyone in their all in their different hotel rooms, they're all in bed doing this breath work and drifting off to sleep at the same time. That's amazing. And then the next morning you're up early, you go right into the ballroom, you do your meditation and it's like incredible. So I've been doing some of that breath work at home in my own bed. Yeah. It's amazing. Oh my amazing. God. I'm so excited for that. There, there's this one meditation that I found on YouTube and it's like 25 minutes and it's like a going to bed one. And it's so cute because at the very end, he'll be like, good night. And I'm like, good night, Dr. Joe. <laughs> But I, I love that. I'm so excited. I, I've heard bits and pieces. He said a couple of things and I've heard a couple of things where like one of the days there's like a a really long meditation where you stay up all night or something. Um, Oh, he doesn't do that anymore. I heard about that too. Bummer. I want to do that so badly. I heard him actually, it was in an interview somewhere. Um, I wish there was an index. Has anybody made an index of all the different interviews and what he talks about, because that would be a great resource. That would be a great resource. But in one of the interviews, interviews. he was telling the story. And forgive me if I get this wrong. The way I remember it is that he had this idea to do like an all night meditation. And um, (laughs) some people loved it. And I think other people like kind of hated him for it is the way he said. (laughs) And they decided not to do it again. But I, I wanted to say I might be getting the details wrong, but he did that once or twice maybe gotcha. I feel like if if he were to do something like that like to to 
preface it ahead of time so that way then the people who don't want to do it don't have to show up because I'm definitely one of those like I sometimes don't go to bed till 4 30 in the morning because I just get so busy with things and it's like well I'm up anyway I might as well do like the pineal gland meditation or the body electric because you know there's no point in sleeping at this point (laughs) right wow good for you that's so cool Love Thank it. you. Yeah. I've actually, the past couple of weeks, I, I have not had the time, bless me, Dr. Joe, for I have sinned. I have <laughs> not had the time to meditate in the morning. I've been meditating at night just because I'm, I'm so busy and I don't sleep until two 30 in the morning and I'm not able to wake up until 10 30. Mm. And then if I do my hour meditation, you know, that's like half my day gone. And granted, I know when you meditate, you get more time and everything. I'm just, there's just so many components to it. I'm not making up excuses. That's just how it goes. But I found time before I go to sleep, I do the blessing, the OG blessing of the energy centers from the intensive and the progressive retreat. Two nights ago, my, my whatever consciousness was trying to slam itself out of my body. Like I was kind of floating a little bit in my bed and I couldn't feel my dog anymore who was pressed up against my leg. And that's how I knew that like things were starting to get real. My mind woke up, my body was asleep and I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> Groovy. <laughs> trying not to panic but I thought it was so cool that even just during the regular basic blessing of the energy centers before going to sleep I wasn't asleep I was definitely in altered states of consciousness that you know we're, e- we're even able to achieve it you know that way that's how I'm able to make it work for me still staying connected and not needing to like you know go balls to the wall sometimes <laughs> even yeah. though there's nothing wrong with that but right well you I before you move on to your next question, sure. there's something really important I want to share okay. um, about, you know, how was the retreat? Um, one of the reasons why the second one was so different from the first one is because when I went to the first one, I didn't know anyone, you mm-hmm. know, so I made friends as I went, which was so easy to do, of course. So oh, yeah. nobody should be deterred if they're afraid of going to this thing alone. You will not be alone for long. You'll make no. But the second one was great because I had made friends with people who were going to that one. We stayed in touch. So I already knew ahead of time that I would know people there. And it added a whole new layer, layer like level of richness to it. Yeah. And um, some of the people who go to these events end up self-organizing and they create different ways for everyone to stay in touch online. So I've been in touch with a lot of people from Marco Island. There's a, there's a really big WhatsApp group they do meditations every morning, oh. every evening. They can connect you with those if you want. Yeah. And just all different pockets of the internet where the students sort of like self-organize and collect. And 100%. it really kind of helps extend that buzz you, you bring home with you after the event. Yeah. And you can like stretch it out longer and stay engaged and keep the conversation going like we're doing yeah. here. And it's just, it's enriched my life in so many ways to have this community. Absolutely. And to your point, Gina Marie, like that's one of the, the like founding principles of this channel, like at this point now is to be able to keep the conversation going and to be able to stay connected. Like if I were to pick up my phone just about at any point in the day, like I have a text from someone from San Diego, I didn't connect so much with people in Marco Island because I was in a different state of mind and in a much different place than I was when I went to San Diego. Um, I was getting rid of and rid of and purging a lot of old energy that like, I just, I couldn't see the forest through the trees pretty much. Like I was, I made a couple of friends, but not nowhere near like how I did in, in San Diego, but I also had an advantage in San Diego. I have this YouTube channel and people said they were going to come and find me and they did. And it just made it, you know, it made me feel more open to wanting to connect with people. It had nothing to do with the people itself. It's more so the experience that I was programming into the quantum, so to speak, because I was more open, you know? Yes. Good for you. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. Every, I, I have a feeling everyone's experience would be unique, of course. And oh, yeah. if you go like to six events, you might have six different experiences, but oh, yeah. it's all exactly what you need at that point. A hundred percent. It totally mm-hmm. is. Yeah. All right. Awesome. That was, I really liked that conversation. That was so good. Um, so with this one, this, you can share as much or as little as you want. There's absolutely no pressure. What was, um, the motivation or one of the motivations for you to go to the retreats? Okay. Well, um, I'm, you said balls to the wall a few minutes ago. 
I have a tendency to do that when I get really excited about something that I'm just hooking into for the first time. <laughs> like when I initially found Dr. Joe's work, I was just like, oh my God, this is everything I need right now. Yeah. I just want to go as deep as possible and learn everything right now. And I was just like trying to go to events and I try, had tried to go to a couple before Marco Island and first time I wasn't quick enough, didn't realize how fast the tickets sell out. So fast. And then the second time I was like so ready, but for some reason I had set my alarm on my, the reminder on my phone for the wrong like time zone. So I missed that one. Oh no. But then I got into Marco Island, which ended up being perfect because um, I just, I was so inspired by some of the things that happened there. The scientific research team was up there doing the yeah. Um, I'm going to do a little, a little plug for Encephalon now, like you didn't ask me for this, but for all the people watching, when you go to Dr. Joe's main website, it's drjoedispenza.com. Is this a lot? <laughs> you go <laughs> at the top of the screen, there's a button that says proof. You click that. And then there's a button that says scientific research and then learn more. And you click that, you'll see right at the top of the screen there, it's called evidence is the loudest voice. And that's a recording of that panel presentation. And they talk all about the science and the research. And a lot of people at Marco Island were part of the quantum study, yeah. which I am a, yeah, we got it. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I have rewatched that so many times. Oh, wow. So inspiring. I love that we're part of this leading edge yeah. work that's gonna change the world really. Yeah. So I, I got off track. I don't know what the question was, but. No, it's all good. No, that <laughs> was the, the question. It was just how, um, uh, what was the motivation for going oh, right. to the retreats? See, I go, I just go right in deep. <laughs> so I wanted to go and like experience it. I had some health issues I was working on and I got to experience what it's like to receive coherence healings mm -hmm. at Marco Island and at the Denver AFU event. Oh, I was lucky enough to be selected as a healee. Yeah. Nice. And so I experienced in total six in-person coherence healings because they did three you know we did three yeah, days yeah. in a row yep. they did the same thing in Denver gotcha. so um and I was successful like um I got a, I've I've experienced a lot of um improvement since then awesome and my healing journey continues and it's yeah. really it's really great to be healing your body from a condition when you have all these tools at your disposal absolutely no that's that's absolutely phenomenal like I it's so exciting when you're, you're in it and then you're out of it and then you're still seeing the results and being able to, you know, see the changes in your everyday life. Cause it's one thing to be in the environment and then have the changes happen and then come home. And then you don't know if you're going to be subjected to your environment again, or if you're going to be able to make the changes. And it's just, it's so great to hear that you really are keeping up with it. And that uh, keeping up with it is not a phrase that I like to say, but you're, you're, you're doing your meditations and you're still so gung ho and full of just this excitement for a new life and a new experience for you. And it's just, it's so awesome. You know, <laughs> I do, I know. And there, you know, it hasn't been like, perfect every day. Sure. I've definitely gone through little pockets of time where I like regress a little bit and fall mm -hmm. off the wagon. Like oh, I didn't yeah. meditate today or whatever, but <laughs> you come back around and you just, you know, you get right back on and the painful optimist that's inside of you. <laughs> yeah. You know it. <laughs> exactly. Awesome. All right. Um, so I guess, I guess this is kind of a good segue. If you have any in particular, um, did you face any challenges that you needed to overcome while you were there? Yes. Yes. During the second retreat, the AFU, I had a day, I don't know what happened to me. I just was so cranky and <laughs> irritable <laughs> and that's fine. And I, um, but it got in the way of one of my meditations because um, as you know, when you're in the ballroom, the chair, the rows of chairs are there. Like the chairs are almost touching each other. Yes. So you're like sometimes shoulder to shoulder with people. Yeah. And then we have space in front of us on the floor. So during a lot of the meditations, we lay down on the floor and I was like all there. I had my little, my mat, my blanket, you know, my little pillow, my eyes covered. I'm all like smuggled in there and I'm starting to get in the meditation. And then I just started getting so irritated. And there's nobody's fault, but 
the beautiful woman next to me, like, you know, she was moving, you move. And like, she was touching me. And every time my body was touched by someone else's body, I was like, and I was so aggravated. And I think I like said out loud, like, and then like <laughs> felt bad. Cause like, what if she heard me? I don't want her to feel bad. So I was just like, okay, Gina Marie, you got to just like cut that shit out. Just like get in the present moment. Remember why you're here, put all your crankiness aside, do the work. And, um, I wasn't able to, but by the end of the day, <laughs> by the end of the day, um, my mood had shifted, but that was, there was a good, like several hours where I don't know where I was just like, not having it, not having any of it, <laughs> but yeah. you know, we're, we're humans. It happens. Absolutely. I've had Marco Island. I had that experience. I think it was the last day. It was after the, um, the evidence is the the loudest voice or the the, the proof um talk mm -hmm. and people were saving seats for one another and i had accidentally moved up a row instead of sitting where i was sitting before and it was the last day and like people were leaving and not very many people were there and the there was a couple that walked up to me and they're like um excuse us you're in our spot and i was like sorry and like i immediately just started to like shut down i was like <sighs> texting my friends and i was like i hate this this is awful <laughs> And then I had to overcome that part of myself of, you know what? So what? Get your ass up and move. Go someplace else. It's not the end of the world. <laughs> but I totally feel that with having to, to overcome yourself, especially in those tiny spots. I had, God bless the woman next to me one of the days. She was spooning me because there just was no space. And she made it work for her. And she got up and she had a big smile on her face. And I was like, you are my hero. <laughs> fantastic yeah. yeah all right so um any mystical experiences that you care to share yes yes the question is which ones <laughs> um so before i went to the first event i had seen a lot of the testimonials and actually to this day i've seen every single testimonial on dr joe's youtube channel there's like oh, hundreds of them yes. they're so cool they're addictive but a lot of the people share their mystical experiences and I wanted to have like the kind of experience that some of these people talk about where they're having full-blown visions and it's mm. very visceral and real and they're like having conversations with entities and from who knows what realm or dimension and and I wanted that so bad and like for the first few days I would try to get there. And then I realized, okay, you got to stop trying to make anything happen mm -hmm. and just be along for the ride, you know? And, um, once I did that, I did start having some experiences. They weren't as vivid and rich as the kind I described to you, but some of them were really cool. Like, yeah. um, the one that was the most amazing. Okay. I'll share this one with you. I could talk for hours about all this stuff. <laughs> so I'm just going to pick this one and I'll say a little shameless self-promotion. I'm going to be sharing my stories from these retreats on my own YouTube channel, which hasn't really launched yet, but eventually all the stories will be there. So here's my one favorite one. Okay. It's Marco Island. Picture it. Marco Island, January. 2022, <laughs> January goes to this retreat with a horrible cough. Like I had had this chronic cough for months and months. I couldn't, I hadn't been able to um, get rid of it. Wow. And it was a problem because every time I spoke, mm -hmm. it would trigger this cough. And if I was silent, I wouldn't cough, but I couldn't talk without coughing. And so the whole retreat, I'm like, I've got um, cough drops in constantly. Yeah big, big jug of water, like always drinking water. And even with the cough drop in the water, I would still cough a little bit when I talk, which is hard because you want to talk to people. Right. So, and it had been plaguing me for months and I tried all the different medicines and all this stuff. So my goal there was like, okay, people heal when they come to these things. I want to get rid of this cough. So, um, on day three, there was like this little, um, false alarm, I guess you'll call it, where I realized, oh my gosh, I haven't coughed. I don't have a cough drop. I can talk without coughing. It's gone. <laughs> came back. I was like, oh, but I had like a few hours where I was like, wow, this is amazing. It's magic. But then it came back. But then I forget what days. So we were there for seven days. During the day, you go through all the 
all the um, sessions, the meditations. And then at night, go to your hotel room. And I was alone in my room. I didn't have anyone sharing with me. And there were three nights in a row towards the second half of the week where I had a series of mystical experiences in my room. It was all connected to my throat. So the very first night, um, I was really tired because it had been long days and, you know, you're just tired, right? So I get in bed. I'm like, I'm just going to relax, read my book. I brought a book. Um, I'll just like read myself to sleep, right? So I'm in bed. I'm on the side of the bed. It's like a big bed. I'm over on the side next to the end table. Pick up the book. I'm like half a paragraph in and I get suddenly hit with this feeling of like, I don't know how to describe it, but it was energy that was not coming from me. It was energy that was coming from outside of me. And I could feel it very strongly, like coming over my body. And I just had this knowingness that something cool was about to happen. Right. And I was just like, I closed the book. I put the book down. I'm like, okay, I'm ready. And then, and I could feel that it was going to be powerful and I didn't know what to expect. And then I got a little scared because I was like, oh my God, what if I see someone? What if I see something like I want to, but it's going to freak me out because, you know, so I got in my own head and then um, I thought, oh my God, what if I like, I'm all alone here. There's no, there's no medical team. There's no meditation assist. What if I like flop off the bed and hit my head? And like, so I got a little scared because some people during the meditation, like their body moves around and mine was doing that. So I'm like, okay, it's all right. Calm down, Gina Marie. I moved to the center of the bed. <laughs> like, a, like you do with a baby, you don't want it to fall off. Right. I'm like, okay. I moved to the center of the bed, the whole, this whole like time, the energy is like getting stronger. And I'm like, okay. And I like close my eyes and I'm like, whatever's going to happen. I'm ready. And then for the first time in my life, I start seeing, I, it's like, I went into some other space. I don't know how to describe it. The energy changed inside my body. I closed my eyes and I started seeing this vision and it was First, it was fractal patterns. I was like, cool, I wanted to, I've been wanting to see these. Um, it was really brief. And it was like, it took up my whole field of vision, these fractal patterns. And then they went away. And then I saw, it was like pages with information written on it in a language that I wasn't familiar with. It was like symbols that I'd never seen before, but I intuitively knew that it was like writing, it held information. And it was like, I saw it like a page would be here and then the page would flip up and it'd be the next page. It's like page after page. It was like flipping or scrolling. And it kind of reminded me of like a slot machine when those symbols oh, like yeah. go by. And the page was like white and there was a border around the top, the top and the sides, but not the bottom. And then the fractal patterns were like overlaid on top of it. So I see this, this, this information and the pages flipping and then the fractal patterns, so I could see both at the same time. And I'm thinking, wow, this is cool shit. I wonder what it says. I wonder what it means. And like, so that went on for a long time. And then at the same time, I felt, I felt in my throat, there was like, it kind of felt like there was something inside my throat, but I could breathe just fine. Mm. But I was like, oh, and then I thought, is there some, someone here in the room with me? Like people talk about in their testimonials, like, giants or like blue beings or you know whatever and I believe that's all real so I was like I said out loud like someone here with me <laughs> are you working on my throat thank you so much and like can I see you but of course I didn't see anything but this went on for like I guessed I'm guessing I'm estimating like about 40 minutes or so wow and um so that was the first night then the second night something similar happened where I start feeling the energy um, come over my body. And, you know, my memory of this is a little fuzzy because that whole week is kind of a blur. So I actually took notes throughout the week and all the details are in the notes. So mm. there's a lot more that I'm not remembering, but I captured. So it'll be on my videos later. Um, but I had a similar experience where in the next night, instead of seeing the fractal patterns and the pages, I was started to see like images of people or beings but it was just enough that like I could see that it was there and then they would fade away so it never came in clear enough that I saw details right but I could sense that there was someone there and again I had this feeling in my throat 
And I'm like, okay, so there's some energy or something working on my throat. I'm speaking out loud. I'm like, thank you so much. I've been trying to get rid of this cough and it's really a problem. And, you know, <laughs> please help me. <laughs> so then like that happened for a while. And then when I went to, when I finally like it ended and I was falling asleep, my body did this weird thing where like, I'm laying on my back and I'm like, okay, cool. That was over. That was awesome. <laughs> I'm going to go to sleep. And as I'm drifting off to sleep, my body all by itself flips over onto its left side. And then my body puts itself into the shape where like my, my right arm goes up, my left, my right leg goes up, my left leg bends and my left arm bends. I'm kind of like, yeah. doing this. looks like a dab or something. <laughs> like I'm like laying on my side in this shape. And I'm like, well, this is interesting. And I couldn't really move for very long. It didn't last for that long, but like, I knew that it was some thing moving my body. And I'm like, okay. And that freaked me out a little bit. So the next morning I found a green hat that a med meditation assists. And oh my goodness, it was Dr. Carla. She was um, the very first person to speak in that scientific panel, the British woman. Oh yes. Yes. Love yes, her. Yes. So I found her the next morning and I told her what happened and she's like, it's perfectly okay. That's normal. Energy is moving through your body. Your body knows how to move energy mm. and the energy knows where it needs to go. So when your body's doing this stuff, you don't have to understand it. Just trust that it's okay and it's good. So it's like, okay. And that made me feel a lot better. Yeah. And the next um, morning, it happened again where I, it was, <laughs> that's how I woke up. I sleep on my back. I'm asleep. I come awake before I open my eyes. Actually, I wake up by doing the same thing again like I'm awake my body flips over do the same shape and I'm like okay and this time I'm like rock on because <laughs> I know it's good because Dr. Carla told me so it was just like crazy and then by the end of the retreat um it was the night before the very last day okay and I was thinking about how disappointed I was about how my throat was and I still had this cough because I knew that something was working on it and then I'm like, I'm just going to do like the breath or do a meditation or something. I forget the details, but I got myself into this state. And then I could feel again, this energy coming. And I said out loud, like, I really appreciate you're helping me. I don't want to be greedy or anything, but I really want to get this throat thing fixed because it's such a problem. And then I felt like it was different feeling. It felt like sharp, almost like shards of glass in there, but without yeah. the pain, just the sharpness. And then I started coughing uncontrollably and I had to get out of bed because I coughed something up. It was like a little glob of some cookie stuff. Uh, <clears throat> and then like I still had the cough, but I knew something was happening. And then the next morning, the cough was gone wow. and it has not returned ever. And it's been since January. That's incredible. Yeah. Right. So I was a long winded story, but basically oh. like something came into the room and healed me that's amazing those mystical experiences sound so incredible like the fact that you were you were able to like physically feel like everything that's just that's so cool I've had moments recently where I'll be punching the air when I'm like in that that REM state and then I can I wake up and I feel my arm like slap back down on the bed or like I'm contorting and, and moving in weird ways. And then I catch it as I wake up, as my body kind of like feels the sensation of, hey, we're doing something. I didn't tell it to do something. And then I slam myself back on the bed. Wow. But like the fact what that does you your were, dog think about that? <laughs> he runs. Oh, my God. <laughs> Most nights he doesn't sleep with me anymore. He, he sleeps upstairs with with my mom. He's he's a he's a hoochie hound. He likes to sleep around a little bit. Um, <laughs> but I. Uh, sometimes he gets upset with me and then he'll jump onto his dog bed. <laughs> but the fact that you were aware of it and you saw like, you actually saw it, images is just, that's so cool. <laughs> that's so profound. No, I was, it's, it's interesting. Cause like in, in one part of your mind, you know, it can happen because other people share their experiences. But then yeah. another part of my mind, I was like, yeah, but it won't happen to me. Yeah. But yeah. It did. I'm like, thank goodness. Cause it really helps. It really helps um, generate more enthusiasm for the work. And then as you know, the more you do that, 
the better it gets and the better yes. it gets, the better it gets. A hundred percent. The more, the more motivated you are to keep going with it too. I remember it was day two or day three. Um, it was after they showed us what the breath was supposed to look like. Um, I remember texting my Reiki practitioner and bitching to her being like, I'm not feeling anything. Why? Why? <laughs> and she was like, just relax. You, you just got there. Like, shut up. She was so polite about it, but essentially it was, she was just like, you know, uh, spiritually sending me a slap on the head to say, just, just calm down. Just, just be, just be. So the next day when we went into the first meditation, I just said to myself, I was like, we've got zero expectations. We're just going to do whatever he says. And the body's just going to do whatever it's supposed to. And that was the day that I had my freight train firecracker experience where it felt like somebody lit firecrackers at my toes and it shot up straight to my head. And I went to paralysis. My face got super numb. My arms got super numb and I had to drop down to the ground. The poor meditation assists. Cause I like, I was, I was weebling wobbling for quite some time. They must've been like this the entire time. Like, where's she going to go? When's she going to go? <laughs> And then I finally went and then I, I dropped down because I just, I wasn't sure what was going on and happening. And then I'm on the floor shaking and all that fun stuff. Um, but then after that, I've had quite a few mystical experiences. And for me, the first one was, was pretty scary, but now that I know what's happening, I'm able to relax into it and to just be and feel and not need to panic. And I've mm. also found with me, and I, I like the point you had brought up about being visual and seeing things and having these beings come through. I'm going to be doing a video. I actually have the notes written here um, about what it feels like for me when I'm having my mystical experiences. Cause I hate labeling myself with anything, but I have what they call aphantasia where when I shut my eyes, I can't see anything. And I've had a couple of moments where it's like, well, shit, when am I going to see the cool stuff? Like I'm feeling all the cool stuff, but when am I going to see like mother Teresa coming onto the beach and like all that fun stuff? It was a great story. Um, but I have discovered that I don't need to see things because I just am. And it comes in a different way for me. I think it's because they know that I'm like a scaredy cat with certain stuff. So they can't like overwhelm me with like fireworks and everything, <laughs> but it presents this in itself it presents itself in a way that's right for me, which is what Dr. Joe says all the time. That's how it needs to present itself for me in order to understand and to not get scared or shut down to it. So being able to honor that and know that sometimes you don't need to have a mystical experience to be the mystic, be the mystical. However, <laughs> stories like yours are very motivating because it's like, it's very much so possible. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I didn't need to see anything to know that someone or something was working on my throat. Right. And also listening to you talk about what's the word? Aphantasia? Aphantasia. Aphantasia. Yeah. Like um, the more I do this work, the more I believe that nothing is permanent. So you, and you are an ever-changing being. Okay. So I believe it's possible that there's a future where maybe you, you do start seeing things. Yeah. Every, every reality is possible. Like I'm, I'm thinking big picture questions now, even when it comes to like, this is going to sound so out there, but like jumping bodies for physical reasons and how that speeds up. If we're, if we are there yet, if we're, we'll ever in this lifetime be there, because if there's infinite possibilities and infinite realities happening all at once, you know, how are we able to connect in with those different realities where there's like physical differences and, and everything, but that's definitely a, a much bigger conversation. <laughs> oh, I'm here for all that 5D yeah. stuff. <laughs> I know what you mean. We're going to have to, you, me and Tarek are going to have to have a 5D conversation and record it. That's going to be like a couple hours long because he, he comments to me all the time that he's just got all of these theories. I posted my theories video and he's like, girl, we could talk for forever. So we'll have to, the three of us will have to connect and record something. So <laughs> I, I would love that. I've been exploring this on the side and um, I have some resources to share with you and Tarek and anyone else. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah, we'll definitely, we'll definitely be in contact, obviously. Yay. <laughs> awesome. Oh, well, that was a great share. Thank you so much for, for sharing that mystical experience. That was, that was such a great story. That was, that My was pleasure. awesome. Um, any concepts seriously stick for you? Like something that you've been, I don't want to say struggling with, but like an idea and a concept where you've just been so frustrated. And then all of a sudden you're like, Oh, I got it. Cause that happened to me so many times in San Diego. <laughs> um, Something similar, um, it's not really a concept, but something that Dr. Joe said during my second retreat was very helpful. 
um, you know how you're in your meditation and your mind wanders as it does, you bring it back, but sometimes it's a bit more challenging to bring your mind back to your focus. And that in and of itself becomes a struggle. And sometimes, you know, that can get pretty bad. So what I used to, before I heard him say this one thing, my experience of that would be just frustration mm -hmm. because when I was, when I realized, okay, I've wandered out pretty far and now I've got to get back to the meditation. If it's a point in the meditation where he's giving us specific instructions on, you know, how to, what to do with our attention, I would have a really hard time getting back into that. Mm. But then he said at this retreat, he said something about how, when that happens, don't worry about getting back into picking up the instructions. Just your job at that point is just to get back into the present moment. Yeah. And then when you're in the present moment, then you can step back into the meditation. And that was a game changer for me. And so ever since then, when that happens, I'm like, it's okay. Just get to the present moment. And it doesn't take long. I'll just like say like, I'm inhaling, I'm an exhaling or whatever I say to myself. And then as yeah. soon as I realize, okay, I'm present, then my attention goes back to what he's saying and I can go right back in and pick up where I, where I left off in the process. So that was huge. Wow. That's, that's a really good one. That's, I feel like a lot of people might struggle with that, especially if they're, they're gunning for those, those experiences and they're, they're, they're trying, they're trying to make a change. They're trying to, to be in a healthier body. They're trying to get the finance, the financial gain and stuff like that. Like being able to, to bring your mind back and just be in the present moment. That is, that's huge. And that's such a big key to all of this stuff too. He says what in the formula, it's, um, uh, relax and awake. That's relaxed and awake. Yeah. Relax and awake. So you're relaxed and you're awake in the present moment. That's like the formula and the combination of it all right there. Yeah. And you're making me realize that like, hypothetically, let's say I'm not able to get back into the meditation, but I am able to get into the present moment. It's okay to hang out there for a while because that's where all our power is. Mm -hmm. When you're not in the future or the past, when you're in the present moment, that's where you can access your power. Yeah. And so, so what if you can't get back to the meditation? It's just, you know, we're here, we're here for a long time. We don't need to make every freaking minute of every meditation perfect. Like we could just relax a little bit. It's all practice. It's kind of, I know you can relate to this because we've kind of um, waxed poetic about music a little bit here. It's like when you're learning a song and like you, you, there's a brand new song, it's so catchy and you can't help but listen to it on repeat mm -hmm. and you don't know the words. And you know, you have moments where you're like, oh my God, what's, how does that song go again? You're like, it's so, I just listened to it like a hundred times, but I forgot, I forgot how it goes. And then you re-listen to it again. And you're like, oh yeah, it's so good. And then you start learning the lyrics and then you botch some of the lyrics and you botch some of the melody, but then over time through repetition, you start to get it. You start to understand it. You start to be able to sing it word for word. You know, like from the second, like that, the beat, just that the first note hits, or even just the way that the song start, if there's like a specific like rest before, and then it goes into it, you know, it's that song. And then you you immediately start going into it and you dance to it. And then you yeah. hit the point with the song where you're able to kind of, you know, sing different parts to it, add specific things into it. And, you know, you can you play the drum parts, play the guitar parts with all parts of your body and your voice. I kind of equate meditation and going through life just like that and doing anything just like that. You have those moments. I did the videos recently on the play box versus the think box. And you've got the think box where you have all the theory to be able to understand all this stuff. You can run all your betas and everything and analyze and do whatever. And then you hit the play box. And that's just when you're able to let go, let loose and have a good time. And that just that, what you had just said, kind of just triggered all of that in my brain. So I hope that added. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Awesome. Good stuff. All right. Um, any challenges since you've gotten home and how did you handle them while still keeping your heart open? Cause I know the integration period is something that a lot of people talk about having some difficulty with. Right. Integrating, like getting back into your regular life yep. after the event. Um, challenges. Well, I, it's hard for me to think of, of challenges like this. I, I know that 
and it doesn't have to be anything massive. It can even just be how you you've shifted your focus and change something that used to trigger you in your environment. When you got home, you no longer, it never, it's not a trigger anymore. You've disempowered oh. it. Yeah. I've got some of these. Perfect. Okay, cool. All right. So first of all, when I get back from the first retreat, um, what helped me kind of stay in that nice mental space was the beautiful fact that a lot of the music from the composers from these meditations are on YouTube, yeah. like Remco, like there's, there's oh, Remco. Remco has this like hour long track called trance. And that was used a lot during the retreat. So it's on YouTube. Ooh. Yeah. And so like <laughs> all, all day I'm working, I, I, I work from home right now and I would just have that playing all day. And it would just help me stay calm and relaxed. But I did notice that when I came back from that first retreat, I had changed. My personality had changed without me trying to make it change. It was just yeah. myself observing myself being different. Right. So, so cool. So like little situations where in the past I would have been triggered or feeling frustrated or impatient or what have you, I was now calmer and more relaxed and able to just let the little things go. And it was so enjoyable because it's such a, it's just a better feeling in your body. And, you know, having this, having gained a new perspective, a broader perspective and expanded my consciousness a bit during that event, um, it was really a welcome change to come home to. I mean, there were a lot of changes in myself that I noticed. One of the coolest ones was when I got picked up, um, I had, a, I had arranged a ride to the airport. Um, Encephalon does such a great job of helping you prepare for the event. You know, they have like a car service you could book, you could reserve with. Oh yeah, yeah. So um, <laughs> before the event, I was struggling with um, being able to handle relationships with people who have radically different political views than my own. Like I know that we're all supposed to love and accept each other regardless of those differences. Um, and that was something I was striving to do, but not always successful at doing. And I was judging a lot. In my mind, I was very judgmental about people who had certain beliefs. And I knew that I shouldn't be, but I was there. That's, that's where I was. So anyway, the driver picks me up and um, we get in the car. It was like, what, an hour to the airport? I forget. Yeah. And he's listening to a radio station that was definitely on the fringes. Maybe it was like satellite radio. I don't know. But they were talking about all the things that used that in the past I would have been like, oh boy, I'm with one of these people. But it didn't, it didn't bother me. I was just like, huh, that's so interesting that they think that way. Like it's, I wonder what it's like to live a life where that's what you think. And instead of being triggered, I was just like, it's fascinating. It's that. fascinating that we can all, we can be so different in our beliefs and it didn't bother me at all. And then I realized that that was a new way of being for me yeah. and it amused me. So I was sort of like giggling in the back seat and I was like, ha, ha, ha. and I was just like, this is so cool. I can just like, and then we had a great chat and I didn't care that we were so different, which is great. Cause that's really what we, you know, we should we should all strive to do spoken like a true God. That's like, <laughs> that's so, but that's so true. That's essentially love alchemy right there. You came from a neutral position in a neutral place of, I don't need to put this person in, in their place for the way that they feel. I don't need to defend myself and I don't need to like, you know, banter back and forth about it. You are able to come from a very neutral place, observe it, say, huh, I wonder why they think that way. In my mind, I, I think back to, well, I wonder what happened when they were a kid to have these specific views or if a, if a parental figure or an authority figure had, you know, given them this insight and how come they think like this and, you know, just like the whys that come through. And instead of judging it, being mm. able to just be curious about it. Yeah. And, um, there's like a ripple effect yeah. that spreads through your life when you have this different perspective, because 100%. like in the past I would have, you know, like we're so much online now, thanks to the COVID pandemic. Like yeah. we have like two years of isolation. I used to like be really selective about who I interacted with. And um, this really opens up your world because, and I never would have like 
giving someone hell for like their beliefs. I just, in my sure. mind, I would be like, okay, they're like one of those people. I'll just hang out over here with my people. Yeah. And it was very much separ separated. But now it's like, if I meet someone and I like them, like, I don't really, I mean, I, I kind of do care what their political sure. beliefs are, but it's no longer something that makes me go, no, they cannot be in my life. Yep. I have a way to connect with them as a person and put that stuff aside. And you're, my life is enriched as a result. So that I thought was one of the coolest things that happened from the yeah. event. And like, it just happens. You don't, you're not like going to the event saying, okay, I'm going to change my personality like this. It just happens. It does. And I, I definitely attribute the way that Dr. Joe does the meditations where he pushes us a little bit more. Cause I, I, this happens in my everyday life where I want to quit. I want to stop. I'm working out and it's like, I'm tired. I want to be done, but he pushes, he pushes us and we sit and we keep going a little bit more. And I kind of, because of my, my super analytical black and white brain, I tend to take things and run with them. I applied that to everything. If I'm uncomfortable in a situation, not like where it's like, like a bad uncomfortable, but like you said, someone who's got different belief than I, I have, instead of wanting to like say, Hey, I'm out Bye. <laughs> I'm able to kind of sit through it a little bit more and respect them for the way that they think. I don't have to agree with them, but I also don't make them feel wrong for the way that they are. And I don't just book it. I observe and say, okay, how can I be neutral in this situation and just let it be without needing to judge it? And that mm. is one of like the greatest things that like I found from this work, you know? <laughs> yeah. I love how you call it love alchemy. That's so fitting. I haven't heard that before, but it yeah. seems perfect. Well, alchemy, I actually have the definition written above my my uh, computer here and I have alchemy is just a simple changing uh, of an undesirable thing into something more desirable that's essentially all that alchemy is yeah I love it yeah <laughs> cool what else you got I'm having such a good time I know oh, this is so great um we've got we have I think three more questions left so has anything mystical slash synchronistical, I don't know if that's a real word. I have to change my wording on that. Um, unexplainable happened to you since you've gotten home or have you had any huge changes? I know you said your, your cough had gone away, but any huge changes in job, health, um, relationships? I know for me going to Marco Island and San Diego, I was being greedy and I wanted abundance and I've gotten an abundance of friends, which I think is far more valuable than abundance in my bank account, though that wouldn't hurt. <laughs> it's on its way. It's coming. hundred <laughs> percent. It's being alchemized right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, I'm happy to hear that for you. That's, that's fantastic. Uh, I have had a couple of really profound changes in some key relationships okay. in my life. And again, just like um, the topic we just discussed, it was something that I just observed as like, oh, that's new. Mm -hmm. Oh, how cool. How great. So the first one is that, um, and just for the sake of everyone in my life's anonymity and respecting their privacy, I'll just say this person, right? Perfect. So Absolutely. I have Perfect. Um, someone within my familial landscape, sounds weird, one of my family members. <laughs> um, for a lot of my adult life, I had a very difficult relationship with this person and um, very rocky. And I knew that I was the problem. Like I had my own hangups in my mind. I knew somewhere in the recesses of my mind, I needed mm. to just get over my shit, get over myself. <laughs> but I would say like, maybe another day, I'm working on these other things that can wait, you know? And um, so I noticed like immediately after the event, my whole feeling about this person and the way I thought about this person had just transformed. And like, I wasn't wow. upset about any of the things that I used to be upset about. Mm. None of their, none of the aspects of them were triggering for me. I was still able to see those things, but I just loved and accepted. Like, so my heart opened, wow. something happened in Marco Island, my heart opened. And I was just <laughs> like, I love you. And, um, as a result, our relationship has been truly transformed and so much better and healthier, you know, like it's, it's better for our bodies. Yeah. We don't have this, this anger and like tension, and all these negative, bad feeling emotions. Yep. So the ripple effect has been great. And so that was huge and like a really important part of my life. So I'm like, I feel really grateful for that. And then similarly, 
there's another person in my life from my past um, that I was really hanging on to, like I had a hard time letting go of. And I knew, again, I knew like, I need to get, let this go, let this go. It's not so easy. You don't just flip a switch and let it go. But apparently you go to a week long retreat with Joe Dispenza and <laughs> you flip some switch somewhere and you let yeah. it go. And so oh, like, yeah. I, I came home and I realized like something happened is to bring this person up in my mind. And I realized, oh my God, I've let them go. And it felt so relaxed, like just like refreshing relief because you know this part of my past I'm sure we all have things in our past that we're just they're always in the front of our mind or they're always in our mind and we can't escape them for long now it's like not there and it's occasionally it comes up but I have a whole different feeling about it so yeah. it's like night and day it's that's amazing. amazing that yeah. really that is so great and I I had a similar experience with my job situations coming home from Marco Island I have been wanting to pursue other avenues. I had just gotten so comfortable where I was and I didn't know how to, to get out or find something different. And when you're ready for a change, whether it be with people or situations, there's no stopping it. There's absolutely no stopping it. And I, the, the amount of pain that my body went through because I had to make the changes, like I couldn't stay where I was, you know, there, of course there, there were other parties involved and stuff. And it's, it just is like, could I have stuck it out? Maybe would I have gotten like worse health issues after it? Probably. Am I a lot happier where I am now? Hell yeah. I am where exactly where I'm supposed to be. But sometimes we have to, we have to understand our worth and our value and know that when things start to come up that like, it's okay to go with it. And it's okay to be able to let people go and let situations go if it's time to let it go but it's so great when things just kind of happen without you trying because even dr joe has said when it comes to relationships too like you're not supposed to work on relationships it's supposed to be a really nice ebb and flow and it's kind of like a bank account like you deposit time and energy in and you withdraw time and energy out and i've had plenty of relationships where there was all give and the bank account was at zero and I've had to close multiple accounts because there was no exchange but like that's just you know unfortunately sometimes how it goes but it's really great when it can happen just in a way that requires very little like brain processing power and little energy and just think out of all the energy that you now have to spend on other parts and other facets of your life with other people you know yeah and you know for I just realized there are probably people watching who have not been to an event yet. So I don't want to be misleading and make it sound like you go to this event and, you know, it's, <laughs> it's all like nice and cool. It's like you go on a vacation as you've spoken about. It. <laughs> it's work. You're doing the work. It's just that when you're doing the work, you aren't going to realize until later what the, what the benefits of the work are going to be, like how it's specifically going to apply to your life. So that's why in the moment, when you observe this change, it feels like magic. Like, oh, I didn't even have to try. Yeah. Really, we did put in a lot of effort. We just didn't know, you know, where it was yeah. going to be. But it's, it's self-effort. And, and that's the thing. And the hardest part out of all of it is being able to control and work on yourself. It is all self work. And when you are able to be in alignment and to kind of put forth the, the best version of yourself is when the universe is going to respond to you from the vibration that you're putting out like is this hard work oh my gosh absolutely like you are a hundred percent like spot on with it, it, it's it is such hard work having to overcome yourself but there's people who are I, I call them the sleepy people there's still a lot of sleepy people out there who are just victims to their environment and their circumstances because they're not able to sit with themselves because they think that there's still more things outside of themselves that they have to change when really it is an inside job. It always is an inside job. I have a, a sticky mm. note on my bathroom mirror that says, if it ain't got shit to do with me, then let it be. Cause that's just, you know, it's frustrating after that. <laughs> I like that. Say it again. If it ain't got shit to do with me, then let it be. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. All right. So favorite Dr. Joe quote or saying, an example of mine is I love it when he says where you place your attention is where you place your energy. 
um, and the whole feel it, notice it, fall in love with it. I love, I love those little Dr. Joeisms. <laughs> oh God. Um, my favorite, well, they kind of change based on like what meditations I'm listening to. Sure, yeah. But there's one that always like, ugh, I love it. I think it was, I think it was from Marco Island. Um, Shimmer the web. Oh, was yeah. that for Marco Island? Yeah, he he Shimmer says that quite web. often. Shimmer the web. Oh, yeah, God, it's magical. Especially after having had some really cool experiences, it's really it, it makes it a lot easier for me to imagine like there is this cosmic web where everything is interconnected and you can you can affect things other places shimmer the web i just love that one yeah no that is a really good one that's plus it sounds like really cool and sexy you know like yeah shimmer the web i love that um and then there's another one i don't know which meditation it's in but i think it's one of the blessings of the energy centers maybe um he refers to you know how he, he refers sometimes to the energy centers as mini brains oh yes because there's clusters of neurons in each parts of, of each of these parts of your body. Yes. Um, there's one meditation where he 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 says the mini brains, and it's just the inflection in his voice or the way he says it. It kind of I picture him like <laughs> cracking into a little smile, like when he says it. I don't know, just the way he says the mini brains, and it kind of makes me laugh. And I don't know if I explained that one right. It doesn't really no. mean anything, but it's cute though. I, I know what you mean. The inflection and in some of this stuff too. That, that's the whole point with the whole, like feel or notice it. Like I love the inflection <laughs> that he uses in his, his tone. Cause it's just that that makes everything. Sometimes I can't help but like chuckle when I'm meditating. I'm like, oh, I'm supposed to be serious. And I'm like the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's going to be light. Oh, and there's a quote that he's got. I love it. It's um, the best way to predict your future is to create it. Yeah. That was love a big one. one. Tarek absolutely like loved that one. When he had that realization, he was just like, oh my gosh, like I, it's such a great quote. It's so great. All right. Last question. So I want you to close your eyes and then I want you to take a deep breath. And in this moment, I want you to connect to your heart and then connect to your future self. And when you're ready, I want you to open your eyes and tell me who you just became and who's looking out through your eyes. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm laughing because oh, this happened this morning. I did one of the walking meditations and you're totally putting yourself into your future self. And she just popped in <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> My future self is bursting with joy and inspiration and like hooked into life and inspired and like charged up and just my future self feels so good. I love that. I can feel that. I could totally, the, the <laughs> fact that you came out laughing that like, that was, that just says it all. That's so incredible. I yeah, it's like, hey. that. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Yeah. Gina Marie, this was seriously such a great conversation. I'm so excited to, to bring this out into the world and for you to create your content and everything. I definitely want to have you on again, um, and follow up with, with stuff. Um, but yeah, any, any last closing words, we've got seven minutes left on the, the timer. So okay. any, any closing words that you, uh, you want to add? Yes. Thank you for having me. Hello, everybody. Um, when I do put up videos on my channel, I'm going to interview other community members and Sarah, you'll be number one. You'll be the first one. So excited. And um, um, my goodness for, I want to give a little bit of advice for people who are thinking of going to their first retreat. Um, go, definitely go. If you can't afford it, you can apply for a scholarship on the website, give to give foundation. Um, and then after you go to an event, you become an advanced student. And as an advanced student, there are a lot of resources available to you. Uh, there's online communities, there's um, advanced meditations, all kinds of things. So definitely take advantage of all those things because it really can enrich your life in so many ways. And um, watch the YouTube testimonials if you like magic because they're magic. <laughs> um, 
I don't know. There's so much. There's so much to say. <laughs> I just really want to say thank you for having me on. Um, of course. I'm really glad to contribute and help your channel, help support your channel. I'm really excited to see, watch it grow. It's grown so fast and I'm really happy for you. Thank you. And I would love to come back. And of course, I'm going to have you on my channel. Yeah, that's going to be, it's going to be an exciting conversation. And the community is just, it's amazing. And I'm so thankful that this one's growing by the day too, because all this is, is just people, other, other little beans, inspiring other little beans to help grow and flourish. That's kind of, that's what I want in this lifetime is to be able to help be be a, a bean of inspiration. <laughs> but if anybody else would like to come on and have a conversation with me, please, please email me at hey there friend yt at gmail.com and we will set some time up and everything. And yeah, so with that being said, thank you, friend. Thank you, friend. And just promise me you'll keep singing. Okay, friend. <laughs>